femoral nerve block is often one of the first that beginners learn, and for good reason. It's relatively straightforward and has a lot of utility in both the trauma setting and for elective surgical patients undergoing lower limb surgery. In this video, we'll discuss the anatomy and technique for ultrasound guided femoral nerve block as well as blockade of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. In the thigh, the femoral nerve lies on the surface of the iliacus muscle, just lateral to the femoral artery. It's bound down to this muscle by the fascia iliaca, a tough fibrous sheath. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, or LFCN, passes under the inguinal ligament and over the surface of sartorius before continuing subcutaneously down the lateral aspect of the thigh. Here we see the relationship of the femoral artery and vein to the femoral nerve. Note that there is a separation between the artery and the nerve. The fascia iliaca dives deep under the artery, so these two structures are in different fascial compartments. We see the LFCN in a more superficial fascial plane, running across the sartorius before falling into a small fat pad between the sartorius medially and tensor fascia lata laterally. Here we see the dermatomes, myotomes, and osteotomes relevant to the femoral nerve. The LFCN is a cutaneous nerve and therefore only supplies sensation to the skin of the lateral thigh. We use the femoral nerve block for lower limb amputation, where femoral and sciatic catheters are left in place for five to seven days. We also use it extensively for lower limb trauma, such as femoral fracture and proximal tibial fracture. Note that the medial aspect of the proximal tibia is innervated by the femoral nerve. Other indications include ACL repair and complex knee reconstruction. We'll block the LFCN for elective posterior hip arthroplasty, skin graft harvesting, and other various procedures that involve the skin of the lateral thigh. For the femoral nerve block, the probe is placed in the inguinal crease and the needle advanced in plane from the lateral aspect. You should see the femoral artery, the nerve beside it, and the fascia iliaca binding the nerve down to the iliacus muscle. We'll be advancing the needle from the lateral side. We want to gently hydrodissect the nerve off the fascia iliaca and look for that unzippering. Always use hydraulic pressure of the saline or local anesthetic to do the mechanical work for you. You don't want a sharp needle contact in the nerve. 10 to 15 mils of local anesthetic is a good dose here. Sometimes the nerve peels off the iliacus muscle instead and the local is deep to the nerve. That's totally fine too. We'll often place femoral catheters for ACL repair and trauma. The technique is much the same. You can see the needle here indenting the fascia iliaca. The motor response shows us that we're close to the nerve. However, this first test injection seems to be spreading in the substance of the sartorius muscle. We're still one fascial layer away. Ah, that felt good. Now we see the unzippering. The catheters advance through the needle to one to two centimeters past the tip and the needle removed. You always want to test your catheter with saline or local anesthetic. Air can give you false positives and ruins your picture if you need to do some fine tuning of the catheter position. The tip is in a good position here. The LFCN is approached in much the same way, just more lateral. It's useful to start at the femoral nerve location where you have easy landmarks. Then move laterally past the feather-shaped sartorius muscle. Translating the probe distally along the lateral thigh will bring out a fat pad just lateral to the sartorius. This is where the LFCN lives. It looks like a little raspberry. If you image this too proximally, the nerve crawls back up onto sartorius where it gets lost in the fascia. Sliding back distally, we see it once again in that fat pad. A needle is advanced from the lateral aspect. Note our depth of half a centimeter here. It's very shallow. Two to five mils of local anesthetic are deposited within the fat pad with an effort to see the nerve floating in a puddle of local. And here are some tips for blocking these nerves. First, you don't need to kill these nerves with volume. 10 to 15 mils is more than enough for the femoral and just a few mils easily blocks the LFCN. Secondly, the femoral nerve is quite anisotropic, meaning that different angles of beam incidence will cause it to light up or disappear on the screen. Typically, a cranial tilt will result in the nerve popping out of the background. And finally, the femoral nerve breaks up into tiny branches, or arborizes, quite quickly at the level of the femoral artery bifurcation. If you're having trouble seeing your femoral nerve, slide the probe proximally to be sure that you're at least at the bifurcation or higher, where the nerve is one chunky structure. The femoral and LFCN blocks are easy to perform, and both are impactful techniques to have in any regional anesthesia toolkit.